Hello and welcome to Panty of the Geeks on tour in Manchester. Yay! <laughs> Just picked up the um, Kane book. Book three. Two books. Our back edition. There we go. That's what it looks like. So over this weekend I'm going to be reading that. And um, well once I've read it I'll continue this video afterwards. And tell you what I think of it. And tell you what's in it. Show you, I can show you quickly what's in it right now by opening it up. So there we go. That'll be the rules and that'll be the story. So what we can do is have a quick look at the rule. Some more narrative battles like the previous two. More real speed magic. And using law masters. Casting spells. I will have a proper read through this. And I'll get back to you on that. Magical lodestones. Sorry for the shaky camera as well. I don't have my tri tripod with me. And um, end time spells. So new spells. For everyone. Fact, there's new spells for every race in here. The Lore of Vampires. The Lore of the Great Moor. So there's a new spell for each race in here. So I'll have a read through that and see how that works in. Got the Elven Hosts, so some spoilers here. Yep. So this is made up of Dark Elves, Wood Elves, and High Elves, yep, yeah, it's made up of all three. Just checking. So it is a host of all three as we imagine. Some different versions of it. Phoenix King, Host of the Eternity King. And then we've got Malakath. Malakath the Eternity King. There he is, a thousand points, same as Nagash. So we can read through this. But again, brilliant artwork. Some cool minis. Some of the characters we've come to know over the years. And the battles which will probably be in the other book. But I'm going to go away now and read this. And then the next part of this video will be done in a couple of days. And um, hopefully I'll be able to tell you a bit more. And we're back, um, so back home as well, <laughs> um, and it's Monday, and hopefully I'll be publishing this today. But we've now read, I've read, Kane, then Times, and what a read it was! So, I can't remember, I think I did show you um, this previously, so I'll just go through this one instead. So this one. Massive book. Uh, if you haven't read either of the other two yet, read them if you can get a chance to. They're amazing. This story again, it's all about the elves. You don't actually need to read the other two books to read this one. If you haven't read them and you want to skip straight to this one, well, that's fine. There's a few references in it to what's going on elsewhere, but it's a story all on its own, just like Blockkin was a story all of its own. Um, I'm probably going to give you a few spoilers here, so um, if you don't want any spoilers I would suggest you don't watch the rest of this video really because I'm just going to delve straight into what went on. Um, exciting times, if you're a wood elf, a high elf or a dark elf player it affects your army, it affects how um, your army works during the end times and the backstory behind it all. Um, as it says in White Dwarf, uh, well, there's a nice picture of Ulthwin there. There it is, Ulthwin. Remember Ulthwin. Um, so then it gives you this sort of like little index if people don't understand or know exactly about the elves and aren't quite as in, in depth, if you will, with elf lore. It gives you a breakdown of who's who and what's what and the elven gods and the differences between the wood elves and the dark elves. 
But um, chapter one's a Widowmaker, and um, well, it focuses around Tyrion and Melkath, the Witch King, um, and what they're up to. So, as people probably suggested already, if, if you haven't already watched anything for this or read anything in White Dwarf, basically. The Dark Elves are under attack, the High Elves are under attack, the Wood Elves are under attack, the Wood Elf uh, realm's rotting, the High Elves have been attacked by demons, and the um, Dark Elves have been attacked from the north by um, Chaos forces of Corn coming down. Valia, I think, is one who's leading them. But basically, the story goes on goes in depth, I suggest you read this uh, if you get your hands on it, even though I'm going to give you some spoilers. Um, Garrison of Eagle Gate. So basically up to this point what happens is the Witch King decides that's bad enough, I'm leaving the growth, I don't like it here anyway, and I'm going off to Ulthwin in one last attempt to take it over, and he takes everybody he can possibly take with him, and pretty much abandons the growth to its fate. Um, and there's a little scene with, with his mother Hag Queen, who tells him not to go and all this lot, and he tries to get her to go with him, and she says she's not going to go. But that'll unwrap later, I won't go quite into that story. It goes into the lore behind it all, and the fact that basically there's a lot of representatives on in the world, Warhammer world of the gods, as in they are gods themselves. Like the Hag Queen, she's basically, is it Hecate? Who's at the front? The back of it. Yeah. She basically thinks she's Hakari, Harakiti, Harakiti, would you say that? Hakati. Hakati, that'll do. The goddess of sorcery. It turns out she's right. Uh, <laughs> so everyone's been manipulated by the goddess of fate, is it the left? And um, they attack, and people were betrayed. Prince Simic betrays his people, he becomes the betrayer. Um, because he sees a bigger plan behind everything, and even Teclas becomes a betrayer as well, betraying his own brother, even though if you've read previously, you've probably gathered that already. Um, bad news for anyone who likes uh, Malleus Darkblade, if he doesn't make it, he gives in to the demon and then he's killed. Uh, he gives in more than once, put it that way, and he's killed. So bad news for anyone who likes Malleus Darkblade, because I did actually quite like him. But he's dead now, he's gone. Um, Corhill Captain of the Lion Guard, yeah there he is, he's dead. Um, <laughs> pretty much everyone's dead. Um, battle of Reaver's Mark, there he is. That's, uh, that's him charging to battle on spite. Um, the demon takes him over and uh, that's, that's about it really. I don't really want to ruin what exactly happens but I've given you a spoiler by telling him he doesn't actually quite make it in the end. Um, like I said, gods will die. Orion dies. King of the Wood. Dead. Um, oh, and then we go to the, the Valley of Nurgle. Um, Garden of Nurgle. This is a really bit. I'm not going to reveal exactly what happens in the Garden of Nurgle. It's a really good bit of the book, I thought, because well, I like Nurgle and Chaos. But I'm not going to reveal what happens to that, but you're still going to have to read it for that. Um, it, it has implications of the future of Warhammer, shall we say, what happens there, as opposed to this exact story, but that's at the end of this book where you'll find that out. I'm not going to spoil that one. But anyway, Melkarth, he invades Ulthuim, um, and Tyrion fights back. Now Tyrion's gone basically batshit insane, that's the that's way I'm going to put it. Cain's basically taking over his blood, he's becoming Cain. The elves that follow him are all becoming like Cain as well. They're all not becoming elves. Their eyes are glowing red. I think it's Corhill, the, um He figures it all out first. Not doesn't avail him much really. Uh, after Tyrion gets the Widowmaker, that that pretty much seals the deal. Um, and Teclas realizes what's happening. The whole high elf race is going down the pan basically. Um, and also Prince Imerk sees it coming as well, that's why he doesn't side with Tyrion, actually sides with uh, the Witch King. And the Witch King sends a gift to um, to Imerk anyway to get him on his side, which is all the dragon eggs they've ever stolen. So the Dragon Prince is based on this massive army of dragons. 
which is cool because I like dragons. Um, so basically, Malkath probably saw in this book when I previewed it uh, earlier in this video, and I'll show you again later, becomes a Phoenix King because he enters the fires of Azure. And there he is, going, ah, oh, I'm burning, screaming. It's, it's, a, it's a lavishly good book as well. I couldn't put it down. I read it in, I think it was on Saturday night. Mm. I love it on Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. It's all right. <laughs> you have to sit there while I read it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Ryan King of the Woods, probably in his last battle. Um, Tyrion, he's nuts. But all throughout the book, basically, you'll be using, if you follow the scenarios, you'll be using elves versus elves, but dark elves and high elves fighting on the same side against other dark elves and high elves, because people keep changing sides, people keep betraying each other. The book's full of betrayal. It's like reading a book about Skaven, almost. There's that much betrayal in it. You're like, everyone's stabbing everyone else in the back. People are turning because of enchantments on them. People are turning because of old grudges. People... <laughs> It's just like, whoa, who's on whose side at the end? It's, it's really hard to follow. And it shows you the sort of stalwart nature of Immok, who in the previous book, uh, in the Gash book, I think it was, I didn't really like him that much. I've never been that drawn to him, but now, um, yeah, he, he's sort of this stoic hero of the owls. So, if you've read the previous two books, you can expect a bit growing read from this, basically, that's what I'm saying. Uh, and we've got Helbron there. She, um, tries to fight the Hag Queen. Again, reenacting the story of the gods, which was this is all about the reenacting the past and trying to change it, with the heroes taking on the aspects of the gods. So Vol is in this, um, he gets killed. Uh, <laughs> as the god dies. Gods are just dying left, right and centre in this book. It's basically reshaping everything. Um, I mean, I was quite worried originally about how... I, I imagine Negroth would have been emptied. Well, wasn't that bully about Negroth. Neither was the Witch King. Athel Lauren, I was thinking, was going to get absolutely trounced. You know. And I thought they might come together with some sort of army on Ulthum. And I thought that's how it was going to end. That's how I saw it, saw it going. There's a massive battle in this. Where the dead rise, and the spirits rise, and the Phoenix Kings rise, and everybody rises. The final battle is epic. The way it's described. It's just completely epic. Um, heroes of old that have been dead for, for millennia. Calder Dragon Tamer, is it? The first, uh, the first one to actually put the Winds of Magic down. There's a massive battle, and Teclis is trying to sort of get the Winds of Magic, just like Nagash had done. Because Nagash has done what he's done in the first book, it makes the, what he wants to do possible, which is bind the Winds of Magic to people. Um, to try and stop Cain, basically, and give them power to stop Cain. But, um, oh, there's Lockyer fell hot. Poor Lockyer. Oh, poor Lockyer. He's not dead. He's not dead. Not <laughs> he nearly dies, but yeah. he, he's not. He gets carried off at the end by his Corsairs. We're not, we're not sure whether he's dead or not, but because he doesn't die mm. officially, he's not dead and he's cool. We like him. Yeah, he's alright. Um, then the final battle at the end of the book, the thing you've been building up to. Um, here we go. So, if you get a chance to read this, read this. But I shall... The most sh earth shattering bit, so if it, if I'm giving you too many spells already and you, you're clapping your hands over your ears going, oh my god, be quiet, don't tell me anymore. This is the point you really need to turn it off. I'm going to give you a big, big spoiler now. Um, basically, it all goes pear-shaped. Teclis can't control the winds of magic and they all go flying off into the ether. And one does tie in, I think, with the Glockin book where Carl Franz, another spoiler, basically about to die but then gets hit by his massive bolt from the heaven which they say is like the twin tail comet. But it's actually, I think it's actually the entire winds of magic for the heavens hits him and becomes one with him. And that's why he survives the Glockin and basically saves the Empire. But... Because of that, and because our poor little island that we saw at the beginning is basically only supported by magic. Where is it? Rod Ulthman. This only exists because magic keeps it afloat. It sinks, like Atlantis, to the bottom of the waves, and everyone that's left there dies. The end. <laughs> 
or not quite at the end. Because the Wood Elves have been involved in this as well, some of them managed to escape via the world routes. The Ever Queen, she becomes the avatar of life. Uh, she's imbued with all the life. Uh, I won't quite tell you what happens with Tyrion and Mel. Should I tell them? No. no. Anyway, to see which one of them becomes the Eternal King, which won't be revealed in this book, obviously. I'm joking there, will be. But um, he wins the battle. I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens. But um, Ulthuin does sink. It is gone. It is dead. Forever. Beneath the waves. And all the lives, all the lives, all the elves now have to live happily ever after together in the only place that they now can. Because Nogroth has been emptied and taken over by chaos. So Arthur Lauren, the forest, which I thought was probably doomed, is the only place that the elves are safe and the elves are there. It's basically like a new age for the elves in Arthur Lauren. They basically drive the beastmen out. The forest regrows itself because now the Ever Queen, who's joined with Aisha, Aisha, Ariel, you know, whatever she's called. Ariel. Ariel. Because <laughs> Ariel. <laughs> they've joined together and become outliving goddess, and then Teclis has shoved the, the entire wind of magic for life into her. The entire forest sort of regrows, very Gladriel like, you know. Um, so there, it changes everything basically. Just like the other two books kind of changed a lot of things. This one has changed them the most. Because um, the first book kind of changed Sylvania and brought Nagash back and made him Lord of the Dead. Destroyed Kemri, shall we say. Mm. For the most part, this has destroyed Ulthuin. The second book, if you haven't read it, another spoiler. Close your ears if you don't want to hear it. Didn't destroy the Empire. Oh. No surprises there though. So the second book, we shall go a bit through this again. Uh, the narrative battles. And magic during the end times. I said there is um, new spells for every race in this book. A new powerful spell which you automatically get. Um, and these lodestones also feature heavily in it which are like magical conduits. You see though. And these are the end time spells for different lore as well. But now uh, basically the eight, the eight laws of magic are now bound to people and not the stones. So obviously Nagash is death, the other queen's life. I think the Emperor's gonna be heavens. Um, almost like Sigma Reborn, maybe, or maybe that's going to be Vol Volton, who knows. Um, Lord of Shadow, it's an interesting one. So each of them have got different laws, and then we've got the armies, which are joined together. And there's different elven hosts, depending on who you're backing, whether you're backing Tyrion or the Witch King. But um, basically, you, you can pretty much use any if you want. As you can see there, I must have asked us, I can't say that. There you go, I'll just show you it. I'm rubbish at translating Elfish. So it gives you the options of what you can have there. And the heroes that you can have there. Give you some idea of who side he's on. <laughs> he didn't start on, he started on the Witch King side, did Felhart. And then betrayed him. Like everyone else betrayed everybody else during the book. Apart from many of the Wood Elves. Many of the Wood Elves just stayed true. Hmm. So there you go. Alice the Phoenix King. So there you go. So yeah, Melkad does become the Phoenix King officially. And there can be no more Phoenix Kings. Because after he became Phoenix King, the, the Shrine of Azurin was destroyed, utterly. And the flame went out. The last of it consumed into himself. That was it. Host of the Eternity King. There you go. Which is, the, which is a big spoiler there, really. To see who the Eternity King is. There you go. I think I showed everyone beforehand anyway. But it's been a few days since I started. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Phoenix King and the Eternity King. 
for the most of this book, uh, you'll be using him as the Phoenix King. It's only at the end he becomes the Eternity King, really. Um, though if anyone's expecting him to change his attitude, he really doesn't. He's just the same Witch King as he ever was. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't melt in the slightest. But he kind of, um, he's, he's, he's yin and yang now with him and um, his new queen. So, uh, there's Tyrion, Avatar of Cain. Royal idiot. So there we go, Skeleton Warriors. So yeah, he's able to summon in the book and in as well he's able to summon his um anyone who belongs to Cain who's died basically to, to his side. Some hundred points as well. And Imak, Crown Prince of Caldor. There we go, you can see that the hundred and ten points. Oh his dragon. I mean, they're old models, they're still cool. I still think the old models are cool, but I think they could do better versions of these. I think they obviously haven't because. Um, People are dying right, left, and centre. Yeah. But we, <coughs> we just assumed that any, any model that they weren't going to redo, like Imer hmm. and the Witch, we're just going to cop it. Yeah. Full stop. But they've not in the, another thing there. <laughs> there she is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh. <laughs> I've queen. That woman. There we go. Avatar of Isha and Incarnate of Life. Like I said, she gets the entire um, magic of life bound to her. She's now level 5 wizard. Not bad for 540 points as things go. And chapter three, the narrative scenarios. So this then goes through what happens in the, in the book, the Battle of the Moon Spire. Should have the Eagle's Gate in here, I presume. Slaughter at Eagle Gate, that's an important battle, it takes place in the book. Um, battle of Reavers Mark, again, another one. Battle of the Blighted Isle. That's when um, they're trying to get the Widowmaker. <laughs> I wonder if the Shadow King's in that. No. Um, Battle of Withlon. With your land. With your land. With your land. With your land. <laughs> Is that a Rhine in there? Yeah. It's a Rhine's battle. Traitor's Jew. Which bit's this? Oh, it's where Corel steals the Widowmaker. That's a good bit in the book, actually. Because you want him to succeed. Because... They don't think he's got any sort of aim to bait him at all. They think he's just an idiot. And then the final battle. Where um, everything goes. Vengeance of Azurin. So there we go. I hope I haven't spoiled this for anybody who was wondering about it. Um, I know there's a lot of spoilers in there. But it's it's how it happens. It's important when you read the book. You'll see how it happens, not just a statement that this like Dally's Marbley's dead. You know, uh, sorry, Marley's Dally's dead. Even tongue twister. There. Um, it's how it happens. I'm not going to give away exactly how it happens, but um, yeah, worth reading. Definitely a good third instalment from the end times. Um, no new models with this one. Um, not entirely unusual because they probably didn't think they did quite as well with this. But we'll see what happens in book four, or if they do go back and make models for these guys, which I think they should. But um, there's also, at the end of the book, I'm not going to go exactly what it says, it kind of starts to hint at the future for Warhammer, at least lore-wise, where everything might get rewritten. But um, you have to read it to see what happens there. And so it makes me wonder, even after the end times, if everything's going to change forever for everything. Even the final battle, wherever that's going to be. So there we go. Thanks for watching that. I hope I haven't bored anyone too much or spoiled it for anybody. 
But next uh, next week, next Saturday, even, the Saturday coming. Yep. Badoosh. Shield of Battle. Death Storm. So we're getting a copy of that. And we'll do an unboxing. And we'll do a miniature put together. And a look through the campaign book. Like we did with Stormclaw. Mm -hmm. And then take it from there. So maybe we might paint the models up. And show you them. And maybe we might do the battles. If anyone wants to see them. But then um, we need to get all of it first, don't we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Nids. Nids. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we read the... You read the Tempestus first novel. I read novel. the Tempestus first novel. That was very good. Um, certainly leads you into Leviathan. Um, it's like a prologue, I think you call it. Yeah, prologue. A prologue There's to um, Leviathan. And it sets up... Mainly it sets up the Sisters of Battle and the Tempestus and what's happening on Lysias. Yeah. Um, it's just solely around Lysias and... Yeah. The um, incursions, if you will. Yeah. What's going on there? So when I read Leviathan, I was just interested in what was going on in that sector. I did have a shufty through the other chapters. Yeah. Because it, it's very, it's not like a story like Kane is and the other. No. It, it's more. This is what's happening on this planet. This is what's happening on that planet, and that's what's happening on that planet, and they don't intertwine, if you will. So it's like a short story on each. No. It doesn't follow like Stormclaw either. No. Stormclaw leads up to this battle and it's all these are all about worlds that have been utterly eaten by the Tyranids basically. Yeah. So I don't think there's any coming back. No. The last did do exterminus <clears throat> and all those planets. Because they've basically been overrun. They have really. The Shield yeah. of Battle's been overrun. Yeah. And if you've read um, White Dwarf, it gives you an idea of why the Blood Angels are going there. It's not <laughs> to save them, it's just to save one person. But not even to save that person, they just want his blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you're interested in the Militarum Tempestus or Citadel of Battle, then Tempestus is the book for you. Um, yeah, yeah, like it is. Like I say, it, it acts Tempestus. as a, a prologue. Hopefully they're all um, Yeah. I mean, you, you want them to do more sisters. I want you? them to do more sisters. I hope they do more with the sisters. Um, especially the Tempestus, because they're interesting the Tempestus guys. Tempestus as well, yeah. Um, Stormtroopers. But like you say, it seems to be Blood Angels versus Nids, I think. I think That's what they're going to There's focus some survivors. On. Some survivors. Oh, there's some the survivors, in, yeah. In Leviathan as well, there's some survivors. Yeah. It does all go pear shaped at the end, though. It does. Even even though, for once, the, the Imperial general who's running things isn't a complete idiot, it's still the, the high force yeah. overwhelms them. There's a lot of characters you actually care about, like Canoness Grace. I actually yeah, cared about. I cared about her because she was interesting and she was very steadfast and very faith driven by what the emperor you know by the emperor and all that lot yeah. um and some of the tempestus i was quite attached to and then at the end when you read about them you're like oh kind of thing yeah it, it does it, it, it yeah but it then it attached the character no, it, that's, a good, that's, that's a good thing it's a good it's, a, it's good it's well written so yeah I'm trying to say yeah. it's well written um which bodes well for the rest of the campaign which we'll see what happens. Yeah. So yeah. So that is next week's. Um, coming up, we're doing some Malifaux videos. If anyone is interested in Malifaux. Um, oh, that's heard. We've of it. had Malifaux models for quite some time. We have. Um, we used to play the first edition. Mhm. Mm quite we a did. lot. Yeah. Uh, we've still got quite a lot of the first edition models, but never really got into the second edition models because we've been doing other things. We've been doing lots more. Warhammer and 40k and finances um, and, and, and such like World of Warcraft <laughs> this isn't the time um, <coughs> but um, while we're in Manchester mm -hmm. we went to a shop called uh, Fanboy 3 if anyone wants to go there I'm giving them a plug <laughs> uh, and they had some of the second edition Malifaux box sets I do have the second edition Malifaux main rule book I don't have the newest one well, we got some of the cards as well didn't we we got some of the cards uh, originally yeah mm. so um, we're going to do an unboxing for each. they're not new models they're not like they just come out but the models that you may not have seen because um, they're a bit you know they're they're diff might, different, different, different from breed games from workshop. Games Workshop yeah. so we'll probably dig out our painted models showcase them at the same time we'll do the unboxing so you can see the first editions and the second editions together but um, stay tuned for that that will be coming soon uh, anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more if you want to make any comments on what you want to see um, in the upcoming um, Deathstone campaign or 
with Warhammer, please let us know. Or even Malifaux, if you're interested mm -hmm. in that, so it's coming up. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you later, guys. Bye. Bye.